on a lonely planet slowly spinning its way to damnation amid the incompetence and unpreparedness of lesser space programs, one team stands resilient against the herds, putting their lives on the line to aid those who were previously unaware of the quick save option. Yes, it's the incredible adventures of Jebediah and his crack team of Kerbinauts. They are the Blunderbirds. Saving the Kerbin race one stranded explorer at a time. Hello everyone and welcome to today's Kerbal Space Program video in which we're going to be rescuing Jebediah from Razhang 868's failed uh, EVE lander, which I'm demonstrating here uh, doesn't work. He didn't have enough fuel, the engines he used don't work at this level in the atmosphere so we can just quick load our safe and show it still standing up in its failed glory and then prepare to launch our EVE lander which is tucked away inside that ferry and we can just turn that translucent so you can see inside but this is it nestled above this massive rocket here all ready to be launched on a course for eve so without further ado we can just turn on sas activate our engines and then begin to throttle up and there we are beautiful ascent start so uh, we've got a nice little cluster where we've got a mammoth engine serving as the core with clusters of three vector engines on each of those side boosters which are also feeding fuel into the main tank. So when we detach the peripheral boosters, we'll still be fully fueled in our main stage. But here we are. I don't want to make too much of a big deal about you know getting ourselves into orbit because it's not as far as my rockets go. It's fairly well proportioned. It's not ludicrously unaerodynamic, and the actual ascent profile is nothing really too special. So we don't have to talk too much about the ascent itself, but just showing it in its uncut entirety, just so you can kind of see. Um, well, the ascent happening, get a good look at the rocket, and also this beautiful mod that I'm using here. It's um, a combination of Scatterer um, environmental visual enhancements using the config files from stock visual enhancements, high resolution uh, terrain uh, to do the surface, and um, that's it actually. Those are the visual mods, so oh, look at that in the map screen. Beautiful looking. So that's the visual mods. The only other ones we've got are better time warp, camera tools, vessel mover. You can see those on the right hand side. We don't use those ones though. And we've got Kerbal Engineer serving as those readouts in the top uh, top of the screen. These are going to be more useful just so you can see them when we're actually launching from EVE. So you can kind of see our apoapsis is high to different points in the flight, things like that. Uh, I like having Kerbal Engineer just for the sake of it. It makes it easier just so you can... When you, if you're trying to replicate this sort of mission, it's easier to see kind of where you are at different parts of the mission and what you should be aiming for. And it's just easier to not have to keep on switching to the map screen every time I want to do a manoeuvre or, you know, see what my orbit looks like, if that makes sense. Um... Other things I should probably get out of the way at this stage, there is a music video version of this video in the description should you prefer to not listen to my voice, a perfectly understandable conclusion to um, reach. And I am really proud of that video actually, I would recommend checking it out anyway because I'm quite, I, I, I'm happy with the way it turned out, it looked quite nice. And as per usual with my music videos, it's not monetized, well I mean it is monetized but not by me, but by the musicians that made the music that's on that video because it's copyrighted. So, you know, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm, I don't gain anything by you watching that video. So, you know, I'm not, this is, there's no malice behind my recommendation. Not that there should be anyway, but yeah, I, th I think you get what I'm saying. So I don't, I'll, I'll just not talk about this anymore. Uh, but we're just doing our ejection burn that will take us directly to EVE. Uh, we've got a Rhino engine here, which is great thrust to weight ratio, unlike the nuclear <coughs> engines that you might be seeing, might be used to seeing, sorry, on this channel uh, with SSTOs. So we didn't need to do more than one uh, burn at periapsis. And there is our EVE encounter. So we'll do a few um, mid-course correction burns just to make our, you know, encounter a little bit more optimal. But other than that, I think we're pretty much ready to leave Kerbin. And I guess now that the fairings have deployed, you can see the lander in, in all its glory. And some of you may have noticed, if you've seen uh, my series Expedition Eve, which was about um, Eve, unsurprisingly. Uh, that series had two landers that would land on Eve and then get back to Kerbin, and those two were significantly bigger than the one you're seeing in this video. And there's two reasons for this. The first is that they were both designed to work from Eve sea level, as in they could land at Eve sea level, take off and get into orbit okay. Whereas in this video, we're rescuing Jebediah from about a kilometer above sea level. He's in like a sort of hilly area, so that takes less fuel because the atmosphere's thinner. Uh, oh, one of the Expedition Eve landers had a crew capacity of four, not one as well. Uh, and also the fact that those landers were designed to work uh, as part of a direct ascent mission and by that I mean it would land on EVE and then the ship would launch from EVE and just go straight back to Kerbin it wouldn't do any docking in orbit whereas this one is more Apollo style in that we have a mothership in orbit that the lander detaches from the lander then lands on EVE and then takes off and only has enough fuel to get into a stable EVE orbit again and then the crew will transfer from the lander back to the mothership and then the mothership is what takes them back to Kerbin which is a more efficient way of doing things which is why Apollo did it that way but for the sake of Expedition Eve where I wanted the focus to kind of be more cinematic-y in things and I, I think 
direct ascent is harder anyway, so I thought it'd be more impressive and more appropriate for that kind of context. But I wanted to also showcase a more practical EVE lander, and this being a lot smaller, it's far more forgiving to fly. The Expedition EVE landers would always flip around in the atmosphere on re-entry. In fact, one of the videos, it actually did flip over, but luckily it didn't overheat and explode. But yeah, that was a... That was a pretty scary situation. So anyway, there's our EVE orbit getting circularized, so we can just get ready to detach the lander and enter the atmosphere. And at this point, I was supposed to decouple the blue decoupler, so we still have the heat shield attached, but I didn't. I decoupled the wrong one. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because... Luckily, I did have a quick save at that point, so we can reload it with F9. Uh, but I've actually switched to the stranded lander here, just so we can make sure we're on the... We're at a point where the rescue craft, uh, rescue craft's orbit crosses over the lander um, because it's at an inclined position. Now you can see there those temperature gauges just showed up. That's because those engines that we're using to perform our deorbiting maneuver actually are burning directly onto the nose cones. But luckily they have a bit of thrust vectoring. So just by inducing that spin, the nozzles are slightly off center, which means that the nose cones aren't being sort of directly in the path of the engine. Unfortunately, the fuel lines for the deorbiting engines uh, did get destroyed from one of them, which is why one ran out of fuel before the other, but it didn't, it didn't end up mattering too much. So here we are descending through the thick atmosphere of EVE. And, you know, for clarification's sake, this is played at 100% re-entry heating. I am especially cautious to check the difficulty settings um, of other users' save files before I start these Blunderbirds missions because obviously everyone likes playing at different difficulty settings but if you're trying to recreate this mission it works at 100% re-entry heating levels in fact we didn't even have a temperature gauge show up at all really so on the craft itself so it wasn't it's, we're not even close to being in the danger zone so there's our uh, target craft. We did a pretty nice landing. This did take a few attempts at quick saving to try and work out our optimal periapsis height that we would need to get a close encounter like this. In fact, in the description of this video, it will have a link to my second channel, well, a video on my second channel, which shows the uncut process, just in case anyone was curious to see kind of my methodology of getting an encounter this close on EVE. I say this close, we're still a couple of kilometers away, but we're at a bearable distance. So now we're going slow enough that we can detach our lower shield without it clipping into the craft and destroying things, we can just detach it. I would recommend keeping the lower shield attached for a, a little while because it does create lots, lots of drag and unfortunately when you deploy the parachutes high up in the atmosphere of EVE, when they initially deploy it doesn't create enough drag to slow the craft down and what can often happen is they'll get shredded as you descend because you're not slowing down enough and it breaks the parachutes with the aerodynamic forces but keeping the heat shield attached creates enough drag that the craft slows down and it doesn't put the parachutes in danger. So there we are, we're, fair, we're not too far away, so we can easily walk this distance now. Uh, you can just place a weight on the W key and the shift key and then, you know, go and do something else. <laughs> but yeah, well, I won't, obviously I won't show you the entirety of the long walk to the lander, but you can show a little, a few little clips of Jebediah there. Very gratefully was doing his marathon training, so he can easily run the distance in his spacesuit. And there we go, see one of the heat shields actually survived there, it's sort of nestled or landed I should say, uh, quite nearby. And there's there's a nice little cinematic run around of the lander before Jebediah can embark on the ladders and you know get up to the cockpit I suppose. Now as you can see all the landing gear, the lights and all the ladders are attached to the couplers as well as obviously those side tanks that just serve as structural points for the air brake solar panels, reaction wheels, drone core, uh, surplus battery supply, all that good stuff really and obviously we've took the experiments taken from the failed lander so we can store them on this craft so we have something to show for our journey and we can deploy the solar panels and um, they clip through the air brakes I didn't realize that was going to happen I don't know why I thought it'd be kind of cool to use the air brakes as a cover for the solar panels to serve as like a protective shell and then when they deploy the solar panels they extend through the gap but they they still extended they clipped through the hydraulic arms of the air brake so it didn't end up looking that great but whatever it works so we can just select the uh, peripheral fuel tanks there and de <laughs> gracefully detach all the unnecessary things and we can just watch those tanks de uh, deplete we only have the one engine it's the vector which has an insane amount of thrust for what it is and it's the most fuel efficient engine along with the mammoth which is basically just four vectors strapped together at sea level and fuel efficiency especially on eve is very very important so yeah, we've got the side tanks uh, on the highlighted there just because obviously there's no engines attached to those so we don't have any way of knowing that they're empty unless we have those fuel displays showing. But 
so that's why those fuel displays are showing. But once we've got pretty, you can see we're burning a lot of fuel, we're not even sort of, you know, 10 kilometers up. But you'll find that once you get through the initial part of EVE's atmosphere, you'll start accelerating very quickly. It's starting to happen now if you look at the nav ball uh, surface velocity. So. Our vector engine should now carry us most of the way using the remainder of the fuel in the initial sort of vector stage and then we can just switch to our LV909 Terrier stage which is far more efficient in sort of high up in the atmosphere and in vacuums uh, just to get us the rest of the way up into orbit. But you can see here we're starting to do a very sort of conservative gravity turn because Eve's atmosphere is so thick you want to be doing your gravity turn quite high up. I don't really know what the most efficient ascent profile is for Eve, all I can really recommend is just Quick save, for the love of God, quick save before you do your EVE launch and just keep trying over and over again until you can kind of do it. I think this was my third attempt at getting it into orbit. The other two times I ran out of fuel or, well, the other two times I ran out of fuel. So we're going to do a quick maneuver there just to get an estimation how much delta V it's going to take to circularize and we're looking at our total delta V in the Kerbal Engineer readouts on the top right. We can see we're well within budget to circularize with a little bit of fuel left to spare. So. Yeah, and the amount of time it's going to take us is again well within our time budget in terms of how much time we're going to be spending um, outside of EVE's atmosphere, I suppose. But there we are, we have a nice circular stable orbit. Jebediah is looking very happy to be in space again, away from that horrible place that was EVE's surface. Um, do a nice little cinematic zoom out. We, pro we do have enough fuel in that lander to actually do the rendezvous with the mothership, but we don't have very much fuel and we have surplus fuel, over 5,000 meters per second, which is ridiculous for getting from Kerbin, sorry, for getting, getting from EVE to Kerbin. So we may as well just do our docking with this one because it's going to be far, far easier, less stressful. We don't have to worry about fuel budgeting like we would if we were doing our maneuvers with the... Uh, with the lander and you know Jebediah he's already flown it from the surface of Eve he's had quite enough stress flying that thing he deserves a little break whilst you know Bill does takes over the flying and maneuvering and all of that so I mean I can guess I can show you little clips of it I don't want to go put too much emphasis on the rendezvous scene so this is kind of how I do rendezvous lazily I kind of burn retrograde you see our pro closest approach there get our target velocity or well, our velocity relative to the target very low I'll do a zoom in here so you can see kind of all the relevant stuff here uh, we burn towards the target and then we start burning retrograde again then we burn towards the target then retrograde you can see we're just forcing those um the close encounter there to get closer and closer and there we go we can see it actually when we exit the map screen thank you i can't remember who it was now i should have checked this up thank you everyone on my seaplane to lathe video where i commented saying how do you get the yellow highlight box that shows where the target is uh you click f4 um if anyone was wondering how to get around that so f4 brings that back Thank you everyone that told me that. Uh, give Jebediah a nice little nuclear engine wash on his um, crew module. Uh, this thing doesn't have a docking port on it though, so we'll have to do a quick spacewalk to get ourselves back into the mothership. And there we go, all, re all happily on board and ready to plot a course back to Kerbin. Now, I'm not bothered waiting for any kind of transfer window or anything because we have enough fuel on this ship to kind of brute force it. And Jebediah, he just wants to get home at this point. You know, we can do our, we can burn ourselves up a little bit. Now we are on a nuclear engine stage and it does have pretty abysmal thrust to weight ratio. We're going to do two burns at periapsis. One, because it's more efficient that way. Uh, and number two, we're at a pretty poor inclination right now. Uh, the la to get our encounter with the lander, we had to be on an inclined EVE orbit, which didn't really get us on a very good Kerbin encounter. So uh, it's more efficient to adjust your inclination at a higher, at apoapsis versus periapsis. We're going to set our apoapsis nice and high, so we can do an inclination change to get our EVE orbit at a slightly different tilt. So we can get a more efficient, or just we can just get a Kerbin encounter. And then we're going to swoop back down to periapsis to perform our actual escape velocity burn. Combining the burns this way is just the most efficient way of doing this particular mission, although your mileage may vary uh, depending on when in your space center's time period you're doing this. <laughs> Maneuver nodes might work out differently for you. Uh, transfer windows, I should say, might work out differently for you. But there we have it. Um, we're going to do a small burn here. Well, not a small burn, just over 700 meters per second, but in the grand scheme of how much fuel we actually have, it's a relatively small burn. So. Again, just burning at periapsis, just maximizing the O-berth effect, although not that efficiency really matters at this stage. We've got a pretty horrendous EVE encounter there. If uh, I think I was mentioning it earlier on my uh, Lathe and Elio SSTO video. You don't really want encounters like this if you're going for maximum efficiency with an SSTO, for example, because we're not so much as passing through Kerbin's orbit, we're literally crossing over it if you looked at the map screen. So 
It doesn't matter because, again, we have a heat shield, and heat shields are ridiculously overpowered in this game, the ablative ones at least, uh, and the inflatable one actually, but heat shields in general are just very, very powerful in this game. So even if we ran out of fuel, we could just, you know, dump ourselves straight onto Kerbin and we'd survive the re-entry forces. But, you know, for the sake of, I guess, justifying how much fuel I have, we can do a proper circularize en uh, circularization with the engine. So, yeah, we have a very, very small mid-course correction to get ourselves on a more optimal Kerbin encounter. So we can just do that quick burn there. And, yeah, we'll just... Forget about the maneuver now, we're just going to start burning gradually, getting ourselves to just be above Kerbin's Carmen line, which is the line at which the atmosphere ends. And, well, we'll get ready to perform our circularization burn. So 1,344 meters per second, but again, not a very big amount considering how much fuel we have left. So we can just fade across to our actual Kerbin encounter here, that beautiful blue marble looming in the distance. Again, I'm in love with the stock visual enhancements, uh, config files, do some little dance with our solar panels, because, you know, why not? And I guess there's not really much else to talk about, to be honest. I'm trying to, trying to think of interesting ways to say, I'm now doing a retrograde burn to get ourselves captured. In fact, I think that exact sentence probably have been fine. So I thought about just trying to use as much fuel, as our remaining fuel, so we'd land on the light side of the planet, but kind of messed it up. So we'll definitely be landing on the dark side now. We still have about 391 meters per second of delta V, though, so we may as well just do a bit of burning just to empty it and justify where we have it. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing here with manure nodes. Um, much like most of the things I'm doing <laughs> when I'm watching doing these commentaries, I'm watching this footage back that I recorded about f uh, a few days ago. I was like, oh yeah, what was I doing at this point? What was going through my mind? I don't, I don't really know. I don't really remember. Anyway, we can do a nice close detachment. I was hoping that would explode that lower stage so you could get some nice fireworks. Sadly, didn't happen, unfortunately. Probably because we were circularized initially anyway, so our re-entry speed wasn't that high. But there's a nice little shot of Jebediah and Bill looking forward to landing, slowly descending through the darkness of the Kerbin night. If you want to get those interior views, it's not actually a mod. If you go, you can't see it, but if you mouse over the Kerbal portraits that are splashed down, if you mouse over the Kerbal portraits, a little button will appear that says toggle IVA view. You just hit that and then you can see inside the capsules and look at your Kerbal smiling there. <clears throat> but... There we are. That's the mission done. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Blunderbirds on screen now. We have a beautiful shot of Jebediah and Bill alongside some videos. The top left is a SSTO to Elu and Lath. Top right is some more Blunderbirds videos. And bottom right is the music video version for this mission, which again, I highly recommend. I really like the way that came out. Other than that, Twitter, Discord are great ways to contact me and links to those are in the description. And I guess have a great day and thank you for watching.